And welcome to another fish tech video. It's just a quick one today. No, it might not be so quick. Let's uh, spend some time on it. It is a public holiday today. Um, so let's get into it. What we're going to be looking at today is um, I want to look at, I mean, everybody has, has, has got like a story of their PB and what have you. And I don't think I've ever really broken down the story of my personal best, uh, which was caught on um, Inanda Dam. Uh, it was caught on Friday the 13th, uh, uh, February 2009. Yes, um, it was an absolutely awesome fish. Uh, for the most of the time, I thought I caught a barbel, but it turned out to be this uh, beast over here. Um, but let's break down, you know, what, what actually happened. Let's, where was it? You know, where did I catch it? What depth? What, what, what? Let's, let's go into some details. I just want to show you the type of uh, log books that I used to keep back in, in the day. Um, I took this out of uh, one of the old SA Bass magazines. They put a, a template out there that, that we could copy and then uh, photocopy and then print multiple copies and put into a little book. And uh, I kept pretty good records up to a certain point um, on my catches. And uh, as most of you know, I did a lot of trolling. I mean, uh, the majority of, of my big fish were all caught trolling. Uh, this particular one here was an absolute nightmare for me because it took me years to beat uh, Colleen's PB because she got a, f a fish over four kilos before me and it took me a while to <laughs> to beat that. So, yeah, that was quite a tough one. Um, but uh, this is the log of my PB. Um, it was caught at Looney Tunes at Inanda, so those of you who, who know it. Uh, let's just look at some of the details here. It was really hot. Jeez, it was a super, super hot day. It was in February. Uh, by by uh, half past seven, I think it was, it, it, it was already 30 degrees plus. The water was 29 degrees. But the interesting thing about the water was it was quite murky, but it had a lot of that algae bloom on top wasn't very nice there was even some of that blue algae bloom which i know which is poisonous and this might have been and the fishing was absolutely terrible and this is probably what pushed this fish down as you can see in this uh, picture down the bottom here uh, there's a little picture on the bottom right of your screen you can see there's a tree sorry it's a little bit of a crude drawing i was in about 54 feet of water there uh and my lure was going along 19 foot. And I'll tell you why the lure. I was actually using a DLN. The Norman lure is DLN. And the DLN doesn't normally go to 19 foot. But the interesting thing was there was a thermocline. And when I was really, really battling, I thought to myself, you know what? Let's target the thermocline. Now, this is a doctored image of mine. This isn't the image of this particular tree at Looney Tunes. Those of you who know the screenshot, it's one I did at uh, Libby's. Uh, and the original uh, thermocline was down at around 40 feet. I've just uh, uh, photoshopped this image here just to show you sort of what the thermocline would have looked like. And it was sitting at around 20 feet. Um, and my deal, the, the DD-22 trolled goes a little bit too deep. That means it was underneath the, the thermocline. I wanted it to be just above the thermocline. Um, so I took a deal in, but then the deal in only runs at about 14 to 15 feet. So I needed a little bit more. So I gave it a little splash of uh, WD-40, uh, which is a trick that I learned from uh, Fishing World, which is an Australian publication. They use that, tick, that trick uh, uh, quite regularly, uh, uh, targeting Barramundi. And ever since I read that article, it just gives the, the lure a little bit of slickness and it just goes a couple of feet deeper. And uh, man, this really made a big difference to my, my trolling is making, you know, is giving those lures a little bit more depth. Don't go and try Q20 or anything like that. The fish won't go anywhere near it. It's only WD-40. WD-40 is the only one that you can use for this application. Everything else, you're going to chase the fish away. It's like dipping it in petrol. So, yeah, um, so so let's go back and have a look at the actual spot. Um, let's go back. Okay, here's Looney Tunes. So those of you who know Inanda Dam, there it is there. And that's Looney Tunes. 
And what happened was I was fishing this area, grants. I really like grants. I'd come from, I was traveling here from Andres Point. I'd been into Diana's. I came out of Diana's. There wasn't anything happening. I went through grants, nothing happening. Came along this, these, this little ledge here, Anvil. Nothing happened there. And as I took this bend here, as you can see, as I came around here, I was quite deep because I knew there were some big trees here. And I thought, okay, there's a lot of trees here, so I, I don't want to get hooked up. But I was actually on my way to Cactus. That's where I, That was my next target. And I was just too lazy to take the lure out of the water. So I just cranked the speed up a little bit. I think I was doing about 6 k's an hour um, on my old bass glider. I don't know if those of you who remember that aluminium catamaran that I built. And I went cruising along here at, at, at a fair lick. And uh, on the finder, I could see the tree. And I thought, uh oh, I'm going to clip it. And I did. The the, the uh, deal in uh, just clipped the tree, and I felt you know, and I and I could hear the actual ratchet go. So I, I just put my thumb on the spool to sort of lock it, hoping that it would pop. And as it popped out of the tree, bang! This fish grabbed it. And guys, let me tell you, if it wasn't for the initial splash, which I didn't see because he came up or she, whatever. It, whatever, came up really, really fast. And then there was a, a splash, but I sort of missed it with the sun in my eyes. And I thought, no, a bobble's not going to come up to the surface and splash. So this might be a bass. But it just felt very bobble-like, you know, from the way it, it was pulling. So anyway, um, and yeah, and ended up with my PB, which was an absolutely fantastic fish. But let's have a look at the actual spot. I don't know if this is the exact spot, you know, you know, to, to the meter, but um, I know it was in this depth range and uh, sort of area. Um, so it's going to be very close. So as you can see, I was quite deep. I was in 50, 55 feet of water. But like you saw in that photograph earlier, it doesn't really matter how deep the tree is. It's what is the depth of the top of the tree. And that's... Uh, Let's just have a look at that just while I talk about that point, because that is quite a important point to to remember, you know, when, when you're um, targeting deep fish. Don't worry about the depth. Sorry. Don't worry about the depth that the bottom of the tree is in. Concentrate on the depth of the top of the tree. That's what I did when I was trolling back in the day. Um, I didn't worry about the debt that I was in, the actual physical debt. It was where the bass could be sitting in the tops of those trees. That is, and where's the thermocline? And this is the type of thing that I was targeting. And as you can see, um, my lure was only probably going to be running in that sort of 19 to 18 foot sort of range. But the water depth was a lot more than that. So something to to keep in mind. But what was down here? Um, if we look at the old mosaic, this is one of my very first mosaics. No, I didn't even map it. Um, Ultra HF East. No, I didn't even do it there. Uh, my Ultra HF in 2019, this is when I started getting the hang of this autonomous mapping thing. This is where things started to come together. 2018, I think, was my very first one where I did side scan autonomously for the first time. And then by 2019, I started learning a couple of little tricks. And we ended up in this um, area here. And as you can see, there's these big trees. And I came over the top of these trees. And uh, I, I can't tell you which one it was. So it was either that one or that one or that one. But it's one of these three trees um, that... Um, that fish was actually sitting in. And I've always thought, but what else sort of lured it here? If we look at the actual contours, let, let's go back to the satellite. Um, categories, everybody loves, they say, John, that's all I need. I just need the contours. If I've got the contours, I know exactly what to do and where to go. <clears throat> and I can tell you now, guys, if I look at that from a contours perspective, Man, there's nothing that blows my hair back here. There's, there's no big, uh, you know, there isn't a concentration of uh, lines where there's a ledge. Uh, there's no big major channel. Yes, down here, there's, there's the main of Ganey all the way down here. But that's a hell of a ways off. 
from from where the fish was. Uh, I mean, if we go back and, and we measure that, uh, go chart options back, back, there we go, measure, uh, reset to cursor, drag it all the way out. You're looking at nearly 300 meters, 0.3 of a kilometer, 0.26 of a kilometer away. Yeah, man. Uh, you know, so so that was was not the attraction to this, uh, this spot here. Um, so the contours, we can't really tell much. Then we go, uh, let's go to... On the satellite, I'd like to show you that. It's categories, let's turn that off. And, you know, from the satellite, no, you're not going to get any clue from the satellite. Um, there is a lower satellite than, than this, but obviously not at that depth, which we're actually looking at. My aerial HD, my elevation when, when I was there with the drone, that also wasn't low enough. So I didn't really get anything of much value here. But if we look at the Ultra HF that I did for the first time properly, here you can see there's things going on. You can see the trees, you can see some other things going on there. That immediately, you know, when I when I first mapped this, and um, look, we we do a much better job than, than this now. So so this was in 2019. We we've come a long way since since that. But um it wasn't too bad. But what was here? And guys, something you must never forget about. And uh, one of my pro staff, Zain Habib, he always reminds everybody, guys, do not forget about your sediment chart. And I can tell you, Zain is 100% on the money here. Because this is a phenomenal spot from the sediment map perspective. You can see there's a channel that comes in there. There's a whole lot of roads that come in there. There's huts that were there. So this was quite a busy intersection. So that makes this a very, very interesting spot. So when we switch over to the Ultra HF from 2019, that does make a lot of sense because you can see all these hard spots here. That means that took a lot of traffic, a lot of pressure, a lot of, you know, there was a, there was a lot going on here. So, so from a bottom hardness perspective around it and buildings and things like that, it actually turned out this was a very, very good spot to actually fish. Um, so yes, do not forget about your uh, your sediment charts. But um, yeah, guys, I think uh, that's all I really wanted to, to show you from that perspective. Um, I'm, I do know there's a lot of our charts that I would like to go back and redo, especially the way we, we're doing it now. But we will eventually get there. I've just been a little bit busy this year getting the new franchise ready. Um, but yeah, uh, guys, uh, have a look at your old records. Have a look at your logbooks. Um, go and look at your old waypoints where you mark great fish. Pop your fish tech charts into there and have a look. Why did you catch the actual fish there? And I think that will actually teach you how to to target similar type of things on other parts of the dam, you know, looking for a similar type of, of setup. And uh, not only just in Anda, I mean, any dam in the entire country look for a similar type of, of situation. So, yeah, guys, have a look at your, uh, uh, get your fish tech charts out and bang your old waypoints on top of it. And, uh, you know, when you're sitting at home and you're not on the water, you can't be on the water, um, take, take a little bit of time and look at this type of thing. Anyway, guys, thank you.